Hi there beautiful creatures, welcome back. Today I have a rather large haul for you guys. So I went to my Body Spirit Festival in Sydney, knowing full well that the only reason I was going was so that I could buy some stuff. Um, which is okay, like as long as you know you're going there for that reason, then it's fine. If you're buying into these festivals thinking it's about not selling you things, then you are totally wrong because it that's pretty much all it's about. But I did get to see some really fantastic talks and one of the talks I went to see was um, from Rochelle Sharman. She has a book and a deck by, out by Rockpool Publishing called, um, I think it's just called The Crystal Oracle but I'm not sure. You know, I bought so many decks guys because they had some amazing deals that I just um, couldn't afford everything in this one turn. But she did an incredible talk and led us on a meditation um, connecting us to our power crystal. And mine is Labradorite or Labradorite. Um, Labradorite. I usually say Labradorite because I like the sound of Labrador and like Labradorescence. Like tiny Labradors in this crystal. In terms of going to see seminars and there was so much to look at. And I definitely had a crystal wish list that I wanted to fulfill this, this time around. So it was shopping with a purpose, kind of. Um, so I'll start with the crystals, considering that I mentioned those first. And some were not on my list, as happens, but I felt attracted to them anyway. So, I'll start, oh actually I'll start with two essential oil, oil blends that I bought from Pro Oils. So all natural essential oils. Um, the first one is called Moonlight. And this is absolutely gorgeous. This has rose, lavender, sandalwood, juniper, and geranium. Um, and it just smells divine. Oh, it smells so good. And how could I not get moonlight? You know, I'm working with the goddess Artemis. I work with the moon all the time. Love the moon. Working with dreams. And this just seemed such a nice thing to put on before bed. So I feel a bit drained today, guys, because I think I'm getting sick. I've been all up on the echinacea stuff trying to heal myself before it becomes a fully fledged thing. But... I tend to get more sick this time of the year, it's coming into winter and also the more stressed I am the more vulnerable my immune system is and I'm under a hell of a lot of stress so can't be helped anyway. Um, and fairy magic, of course I had to get fairy magic but this actually smells divine and will smell even more amazing in my diffuser. So this has jasmine, geranium, bergamot and cedarwood. And these two um, scents, actually, jasmine and geranium, a lot of people put in for um, anything to do with fairies, which is quite interesting because I never really associated them with um, the fae. Um, but then again, I love gardenia and I love jasmine and I feel like that really ties in. So those were the two, the two essential oils I got because I still have quite a lot and I'm slowly, slowly growing my collection of essential oils because I really like that way of... Um, working and evoking different different things. Then this next beautiful crystal that I got is one of my first cluster crystals. How exciting! Or of sizable and this is Apophyllite. So Apophyllite you can tell it has all these pyramids so that's how you know it's not quartz. Or maybe it is a type of quartz but it's because it has all these pyramids it's um you know amazing and this one is just beautiful and it um apophyllite is supposed to help you connect to the akashic records it has the same sort of thing like lemurian quartz where it connects you to the higher energies and astral work and i mean it is just stunning like it's so beautiful and this one was quite a good price as well and i love it because it just looks like a landscape all on its own like oh crystals right so this was all from the same store and I got this gorgeous little point of fairy quartz because I do not have one in my collection. And I loved this one. It was so cute and just perfect to put into my fairy nest. I have a cluster, like a small cluster of fairy quartz and also like a candle quartz, which I kind of put in there as well. Then I got this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chunk of Labradorite. And you can see how gorgeous it is. Hopefully it'll flash and not just show you the blinds. There we go. Look at that. Uh, so it's polished on one side and then raw on the other, but even raw on the other. It has a heart, like it has veins. This crystal is so alive to me. Like you can see that. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. So these were some of the ones on my wish list that I've written down that I've specifically looked for. And this one is really hard to come by. Okay, so this is Sugalite or Sugalite. 
um, and it's quite expensive because it's a rare stone. It's only found in one particular area in Japan. Thank you to the Crystal Affirmation deck for teaching me that. And I pulled this card in that deck a couple of weeks ago. But it had such a synchronistic message for me that I thought, fuck, I really need to find this stone. And it turns out to be almost impossible to find um, authentic Sudralite because a lot of the time it can be dyed howlite or something like that can look very similar in a polished form so I got a rough piece of Sudralite and you can see it has such a beautiful vein of purple through it and this stone just has so much power like it's tiny this tiny piece cost me $12 Australian just to let you know <laughs> But it's just absolutely beautiful and so potent. So this is a stone for uh, any type of psychic work. It's supposed to be incredibly potent for psychic work. Um, it says here, the stone helps sensitive people and light workers to adapt to the earth vibration without becoming mired or despondent. Um, it can bring light and love into the darkest situations. It aids forgiveness, eliminates hostility, and it's a useful stone to work with in groups and blah, blah, blah. But mostly this stone is excellent at connecting you to the astral and Akashic records and all that sort of stuff. And that's kind of the work that I'll be doing hopefully within the next month. Then I got this absolutely gorgeous because I wear a lot of crystal jewellery. I, I wore Numite all throughout the festival and I've worn it all through this weekend and holy fuck, I had the most intense dreams these past couple of nights. Last night in particular, I got visited by Baba Yaga. Um, if you guys don't know who Baba Yaga is, look it up. She is one fucking intense current energy to work with, but so amazing. So, working with those darker shadow aspects, um, I went to bed the other night with uh, holding a piece of Rainbow of City and had amazing sort of meditation before I went to sleep with it that let me release a lot of fears that I'd had about certain experiences and things. Um, and it's just such a, it's a comforting stone and holds you while you're experiencing those, um, those things that you need to confront within your shadow. And it just gives you a positive space to do that in. I love, I love that. Like, that was incredible. So... I bought a rainbow obsidian bracelet because like I said I wear crystals a lot and I want to connect even more with this energy by wearing it on my body. So that is my beautiful piece of rainbow obsidian. Not piece of rainbow obsidian but you can't really see the rainbow in it. Oh you can a little bit but it's just a gorgeous and it, it just feels like such a amazing vibrational stone to work with. Then I got this tiny piece of Apophyllite, which is another very expensive stone. Um, again, not Apophyllite. Yeah, Apophyllite. The other one's Astrophyllite, and this one's Apophyllite, the black one. And it has these little sparks or needles of blue, which you can maybe, maybe just make out there. Um, and it's stunning. So when I read that this was also about astral travel and touched it, and I was like, ah, I need to have it. <laughs> it just felt incredible. So all of these really potent stones, they don't need to be big. I heard somebody at the festival saying, get the bigger one, it has more power. It's like, that's not how it works. The crystals, they have to sing to you. It doesn't matter if they're tumbled or not or whatever. Um, if you connect to, you know, a beautiful polished stone that's like fucking this big, then fine, good for you. But don't impose that upon, upon other people that that's what they need. Then I got this gorgeous sodalite heart. Because I don't have any sodalite, and it's just too beautiful. Like, I'm not one for blue, you know that, but the energy of this was just so, so comforting and so peaceful that I feel like after having all these intense experiences and I've got some really intense crystals to work with, I just needed something a little, a little hot, a little sodalite hot. Good for the throat chakra. Okay, so that's almost concludes the crystals. I have finally gotten myself a selenite wand and it's amazing. It's just incredible. I don't even know how to explain how beautiful the energy in this is. I love selenite anyway um, and I wanted more of it and one of the things that I wanted was a wand because I feel like um, points are really powerful so if you like need to draw energy in you know use it as an actual one to focus energy but also use it to like draw energy into my body and draw energy onto other crystals because it's such a transmitter like I feel like it doesn't hold energy it just transmits light you know so love selenite so I got this wand 
So that's my uh, crystals. And now, I think I might do this another way. Oh. So I'll start with the decks. I won't do any unboxings because otherwise I'll freak myself out. But I'll show you the open one that I have. So this is the Cosmic Oracle. So I got four Oracle decks. Um, this is the Cosmic Oracle by Nari. Um, Nari Anastas Anastasia. Yeah, Nari Anastasia. That's an awesome name. Anyway, so I met her at the festival actually and she's absolutely wonderful. So this deck is published by Rockpool Publishing. Go and check them out. Um, when I saw, oh god, when I saw the card, the first card in this deck. I was like, how can I not get this deck? Um, and, and the fact that it's like all space consciousness and stuff. Um, so I did open this deck because I got it signed by the artist herself because she was there. And this was the first card. And it's Awaken. Just look at that. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? It's just so gorgeous. I'm in love. So, um, anyway, I'll show you a couple of cards, but the artwork just spoke to my soul. Such beautiful artwork. I just couldn't, I couldn't not have this deck. I don't know if it's available on their website yet, actually, because I got this at the festival and there were only three decks left. So that's how popular it was. And this was the second last day of the festival. And these are the backs. But I just feel like, oh, this just vibes so much with what I'm experiencing energetically at the moment, which is a super opening of my consciousness to the universe and embracing that universal energy in a totally new way that I'd never would have, that I ne never thought really to connect to before. So the other couple of decks that I got are... I got the Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco because Blue Angel Publishing had a stand and they had three for 50 and I'm like, how can I not get three decks for 50 bucks? It's too good of a deal. They're all decks that I've been considering purchasing for a very long time, so I didn't do it on a whim um, entirely. Uh, so like, like I said, I went there to shop and I knew I went there to shop, so what are you going to do? So I got the Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I got the... Uh, Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle by Lucy Cavendish. This has the new backs, but I did check it out and I really like them, so I don't care. Um, and I like that it's a, in a convenient sized box. And this, I'm like, how the fuck have I not owned this deck before? Like, look at that. Anyway. And the last deck I got from Blue Angel may surprise some of you, or not. It's the Sacred Rebel Oracle. Um, by Alana Fairchild. Like I said, I have nothing against her decks, but her books just grind me. Like, I cannot stand the way that woman writes in her books. Her guidebooks are great, but for some reason, those books do not gel well with me on a spiritual level, on a, on a very practical mental level as well. Um, and everybody and their mother has seen this deck and probably owns this deck as well, and I didn't. And it's been on my list for a long time, and I've been avoiding it for a long time. But as I was flicking through the deck, I saw some really really potent messages in there for me. So that is all of the decks that I purchased. Well, actually, not that I purchased. I was very lucky to have my mom along with me. She bought me some of these wonderful decks. Um, and now I just have some books to show you and then I'll sign off. So the first book has is another one that's been on my list for a long time and they had three for a certain price and I do want to do a massive amount of book reviews when I finish reading these books that I'm reading. Um, I actually have one coming up so that might be the next video. You may see me in this form again. Um, <laughs> so this one has been on my list for a long time. It's called Awakening to the Spirit World. It's by Sandra Ingerman and Hank Wesselman and it's called The, the Shamanic Path of Direct Revelation. But not only does it have, um, you know, exercises to do and you know look the shadow side of shamanism was the first thing I opened up to synchronicity then creative art as a bridge into the shamanic realms and I've been connecting a lot to my ancestral energies and reading about them in that Balkan witchcraft book I'm finding out that a lot of these witches were actually shamans and very potent um, very able to go into trance very quickly and um, 
that's very interesting to me because I have been very attracted to shamanism but not felt like Native American all has really called to me and wondering why I'm so attracted to shamanism and it's because it's within my own heritage so there you go so that's one of the books that I got then the other two are sort of ones that I just found really interesting and were part of like that that deal so this is Black Rose, Empowering the Inner Goddess by Soraya Rose. And I have some of her spell books and they're actually really good and really practical. Um, I inherited those from my grandmother. And I just thought, this is, you know, this is cool. It's a fun book. It's not a long read. And it's just got some like eye-opening things, you know, like developing healthy goddess attitudes. All that sort of stuff. With the wisdom of the dark goddess, what you focus on is amplified and attracts attention. That kind of stuff. Part two, exploring your inner priestess. Um, and I just, you know, it, it just seems like a really good practical book. And that's kind of what I'm about at the moment. I want to not just read about these things, but actually put them into practice in my own life. And then I got this because I'm a space cosmic strange creation. But so are we all. Um, it's called Quantum Creativity, and it is Think Quantum, Be Creative, Amit Goswami, PhD, author of The Self-Aware Universe and The Quantum Doctor. So it basically talks about, you know, what is creativity, what is quantum thinking, it gives you again um, exercises and stuff to do, it goes into like how quantum mechanics and stuff is basically like a macro version of our microbiology, like how everything, every cell in our body is basically a replication of quantum physics um, it's fascinating stuff so I thought um, hells yeah I want to be quantum creative because that's basically my entire life um, so my throat is hurting <laughs> so I thought um, yeah it sounds really fascinating and something that I'm definitely into um, you know how I did the whole big magic book club thing I thought something about her creativity ideas they did gel and they didn't gel and so maybe maybe this will gel a bit more with me because I'm all up in that space age. <laughs> anyway, so see you in the next video. Bye guys.